Today we're talking about pulleys. So what we have here are four different arrangements of pulleys. And, and what we're gonna do with each of these is put some load P on one end of each pulley. What we're gonna do is go through and ultimately figure out the IMA and AMA of each of these pulleys. Uh, and that means we'll be able to understand just how much force it's gonna take to lift this load uh, and just how far we're gonna have to pull the other end of this pulley in order to lift this load a certain distance. So starting with this pulley right here, uh, what we have is a, a pulley. This is just a, a pulley wheel. We're gonna say this is frictionless and massless. Uh, and, and so this pulley wheel is gonna have this string that runs up over the pulley and we're gonna pull on the other end of this pulley with some force. So realize this load has some force downward on it by gravity, which ultimately we're trying to fight by pulling on this other end of the string. So there's an input force over here, F in, and an output force, F out. And in order to understand the relationship between the magnitude of these two forces, there's a few things we need to talk about with pulleys here first. And the first thing we're gonna do is go through and talk about first IMA and AMA. The ideal mechanical advantage for any simple machine is D in over D out. And the AMA, or the actual mechanical advantage, is F out over F in, F being forces. And what we're gonna do with these pulleys is we're gonna say that these pulley wheels are massless, and we're gonna say they have no friction. And what that means for us, is that means IMA and AMA are gonna be the same for pulleys. Uh, once we start putting things like mass and friction into these, they get much more complicated and we don't want to play that game. We're just trying to get a basic understanding of how to find the IMA and AMA of a pulley. So for, for this discussion, we're going to say these are both the same. If we know IMA, we also know AMA. Uh, now looking at this pulley, we can't really tell a whole lot by the relationship between the forces, but we can logically work our way through to figure out displacements here. And there's a couple of things that we need to talk about uh, with how displacements are influenced by these strings. And so the first thing we need to realize when dealing with a, a cable or a string on a pulley is that the strings or cables never elongate. That means if I pull uh, one foot worth of cable downward on the left-hand side of this pulley, we're gonna have to move one foot up over on the right-hand side of this pulley. Now that'll change a little bit as we move throughout these other pulleys, but the overall length of the cable from one end here to the other end here will never change. The other thing we need to understand about the cables and the pulleys is that the tension, the tension is the same at all points in the cable. So if there's 100 pounds of tension here, there's gonna be 100 pounds of tension here and that will carry through to these other pulleys as well. And we'll see how that does that later on. First, I wanna look at this little guy right here. So using these two ideas, we can actually go through and solve for the IMA of this pulley right here. In order to do that, we're gonna look at displacement. So let's say we have a desired outcome where this pulley is gonna move this load upward some distance, we'll just call it D out. Ultimately, what this means is the string over on this right-hand side of the pulley needs to move upward DO. That means the string on the other side of this pulley is gonna have to move an equivalent distance. If we want this string to go up DO, we have to pull DO worth of string over here. So this DO is actually gonna be the distance traveled by the input. So if DO and DI are the same, that means the IMA of this pulley is simply one. And so the question comes up, why would we have a pulley like this? If the purpose of a pulley is to provide mechanical advantage in lifting something, what good is a pulley that has an IMA of one? And the answer is, in this case, this pulley right here is simply changing the direction of the force rather than having to lift upward on this block to, to pull it up, it might be easier to pull down on, on this string in order to lift this block. So all this is here for is simply to change 
the direction of our input force. So it's an IMA of one, but it still can be useful in certain situations. Let's look over here now to this next pulley. This pulley still has this same load P. And so gravity's pulling down on this pulley with the same force. We're gonna say this is F out. And again, let's go through and try to lift this load the same distance. D out. Uh, in this case, things are gonna be a little bit different and I'll explain why. You'll notice if we want this load right here to move upward some distance DO, Maybe that's a foot or two foot, whatever. I don't care how far it is. We want this to move up a certain distance. That means this string right here is gonna have to get DO shorter. And this segment of string right here is gonna have to get DO shorter. So if we need to take up DO worth of slack out of this side and DO worth of slack out of this side, that means this string right here, because the Overall cable can never change length. This string right here is going to have to move downward two times DO. So in this case, we're gonna pull the input side two times the output distance. So DI is going to be two times DO. And of course, this leaves us with an IMA of di is twice as large as do that leaves us with an ima of two now if there's an ima of two here let's talk about forces and what this pulley is really doing for us now if the ima is two that means the ama is two so our output force is going to be twice as large as our input force in practice what this means is if we want to lift this load, P, we're going to have to pull with a force that is half of the load's weight, or F out. The trade-off is we have to pull twice as far as this load actually moves. Remember, simple machines are simply exchanging force and displacement for force and displacement, or really they're doing or providing mechanical advantage. In this case, you'll see we have a large force over a small displacement, out, and that is the result of a small force over a larger displacement, in. Continuing on to this pulley over here, we see a similar situation. Let's go ahead and lift this load, the same distance, D out. And again, gravity is still pulling against this load with some force, which we're going to call the output force, F out. And so, again, we can figure out what's going on here by looking at the, the cables and realizing that the cables never change length. If we want this block to move up and with it, this pulley right here to move upward, all a distance DO, that means this cable right here has to get DO shorter. This segment of cable right here has to get DO shorter. And this segment of cable right here has to get DO shorter. That means in order to maintain the overall length of this entire cable, this point right here, or this length of cable is gonna have to get three DO longer. So in this case, we're gonna see that DI is in fact three times DO. Well, going back to our equation for IMA, we'll find that IMA is three. Uh, so that means the input distance is three times greater than the output distance. Now the trade-off there is the force in this case is going to be significantly smaller. The input force in this case, according to our equation for AMA, knowing AMA is the same as IMA, that's three in this case, our input force is going to be one third of the output force. So if we're trying to lift say 100 pounds of load, it would only require 33.3 pounds of input force, assuming there was no friction in this system. And we are assuming there's no friction. So let's deal with the last one here. You should be seeing a pattern by now. 
Uh, we're gonna go through and again, try to lift this load some distance DO. I don't care how far that is. This is the distance on the output end of the pulley. Again, just as always, we're lifting this pulley, uh, effectively fighting this output force. So, we didn't have an input end on the string. How terrible would that be? All right, so uh, what we're gonna have to do in order to lift this block is to go through and pull on this thing, just like we have been, and you'll realize, if, if we want to pull this block upward DO, we have one, two, three, four strings that all have to get DO shorter. That means over here, we're going to have to pull the input side of the string four times DO because it has to take up the slack from all four strings. So the input distance is going to be four times the output distance. The trade-off here, of course, is we can pull with one fourth of the total force. And this of course means that the IMA is equal to four. So what we have here are four different pulley setups or four different pulley arrangements. Uh, and in each case, you'll see they work slightly differently just based on how they're strung up or how these different pulleys are connected together. Now it's important to remember when we're dealing with pulleys, we're going to be saying that the IMA and the AMA are the same, at least when trying to go through and determine forces based on displacements. Uh, we're, we're going to say our pulleys are 100% efficient. So it's important to remember, anytime you're dealing with a pulley, you really need to look at the strings and how many strings are moving around. That doesn't make jack sense. Now, one thing worth pointing out here in this problem is if you look at the IMA of each pulley, in this case, the IMA was one. And you'll notice the IMA was one when we had only one string. Now, there's a trick to pulleys that I want to point out here, and you can see this looking at any one of these pulleys. I'll start here. You'll notice the IMA was one for this pulley. And you'll notice there was only one string which was connected to the load itself. Here we have an IMA of two, and you'll notice there was one, two strings connected to the active end of the pulley. When I say active end, I mean the end that's moving. We have a static end and an active end. So if we had two strings connected to the active end, the IMA was two. Keep that pattern going. For this IMA that was three, you'll notice we had one, two, three strings connected to the active end of the pulley. Or over here, for an IMA of four, we had one, two, three, four strings connected to the active end of the pulley. So what that means is anytime you look at a pulley, if you want to know the ideal mechanical advantage of the pulley, all you do is simply count the number of strands of cable which are connected to the active end or the, the load carrying end of the pulley. So this is how we analyze pulleys when dealing with mechanics and engineering. And on that note, that's all for now.